Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor said, my name is Darren. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so uh, uh, bear with me. Um, I'm up here today because I was moved by the Holy Spirit to do so. If it were up to me, I'd be sitting with you all trying to stay as unnoticeable as possible. When I put these words together, I was thinking, I'll never be able to keep it together well enough to do something like this. You see, I'm a, I'm a crier. It's not the way I've always been, though. Um, I see lots of tissues there, so that's good. <laughs> uh, I was once, I'd say, your normal crier here and there, maybe like a semi-annual type of thing. But losing someone dear to me in an automobile accident that we were involved in together at the age of around 23, and then a couple years later, losing my sister to suicide changed me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. At that time, I had two choices to make. Let this ruin me, or let it mold me. Mm -hmm. I first struggled with it ruining me. I was making poor choices, which usually led to more terrible choices, you know, ranging from drugs, alcohol, fornication, uh, quick, quickly brought me to the point where I knew better and realized I would be led down a path that would be purely unacceptable in God's eyes. So I started making changes and, and took a hold of everything good I could find and hopefully the hardest time of my life. I then became satisfied. I had written overwhelmed, but I wasn't overwhelmed yet. I was satisfied at that point with the benefits of living life and at that point, I'll say a much better direction. <clears throat> Although as time passed, I found myself mediocre, lukewarm, as they say, and kind of became complacent with that, like so many do. We easily become of this world without realizing it, and we somehow get blinded to it all and think everything is okay living like that. The only thing this world has to offer is a hollowed out promise that eventually gets filled with discouragement and despair. It was laying heavy on me to get involved and back on track and live to living God's way. I've been living in the Shippensburg area for about five years and was hesitant about churches because I struggled with religious aspects that seemed to keep things on the surface, never really getting down deep in the good stuff. I knew I needed more than that because I knew there was much more to the Spirit than what I was being taught the majority of my life. My grandmother, my mom's mom, we call her Mama, <laughs> showed me through her life that there is something quite special that goes on inside of you when you really get submerged in the Word. Mm -hmm. She used to kind of whisper, like I hear so many of you doing today, and since I've been coming here, she whispered while we prayed, and I could see she was feeling in the way I desired. So I went on for many years thinking that if I just kept my beliefs strong and read the Bible as often as I thought I should, then I was doing it right. I thought to myself, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Well, in one way I was right. You don't have to go to church to have faith, but boy was I wrong. <laughs> I was missing out, big time. The joy this house has brought to my life is overwhelming mm -hmm. and an answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was brought up in a Christian home. The stories in the Bible were taught to me all throughout my youth. <coughs> I asked to receive Jesus at a young age. I think I asked him more than a hundred times <laughs> when I was a kid just to make sure. <laughs> it wasn't until I was a teenager that things become very difficult for me. I became depressed at the age of around 16 or 17, I'd say. It's only by God's grace did, not, did I not end my own life. I struggled, I, I mean struggled. I've had several suicide attempts in my life. I, uh, I, was, I started out cutting and then uh, you know, went for it one day. I still have the scars on my wrist. <coughs> But after losing my sister to it and seeing the impact of it all, it became clear that it wasn't an option for me. 
I could see my family, I couldn't see my family hurt like that again, especially intentionally for my own doing. So I lived my life coping instead of healing. When someone copes, they usually try to numb or hide the pain or trouble that, that, that they're living with. And I did just that for a long time. I let the world consume my life and just did whatever was available at the time to distract me from what was really going, in, going on inside. My soul was darkening, and I was losing the sight of the joy I could have through Christ Jesus. I found myself praying only when I was in trouble and when I needed him. So during my late 20s, I thought to myself, maybe it's time to settle down a bit. I had a good run, as the world likes to call it. <laughs> I lived a single, selfish life for a long time and figured it was time for a life-changing event, I guess I could say. So eventually I met a Christian woman and thought she would be a good mother and, and marry her. But without a good foundation, that marriage struggled from the beginning, and after three years, we went our separate ways. I was not prepared for married life, and, and that was evident. The race for making a, a better life, uh, you know, I have a note here saying more money, you know, we, we were after the money, we were after a, you know, a better life as far as financial means, and, you know, it says in the Bible that uh, it's, it's harder to fit a camel through the needle of an eye than it is to have a rich man walk through the gates, and Amen. I didn't want to be in that situation. I can't imagine trying to fit a camel through that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, like I said, the, the race for making a better life for ourselves of this world was the biggest contributor to the two of us growing apart. <clears throat> she soon got a job traveling overseas, and my job consisted of a lot of regional travel and an on-call responsibility that kept me constantly running all over creation, to and fro, as the Bible calls it. We barely saw each other the last year we were married, and I guess for some that can be a workable situation, but for me personally, it just left me feeling empty and lonely. After our divorce, at this particular point is where my life took a U-turn. I hit rock bottom, my guilt was overwhelming, and I was in desperate need of repentance and forgiveness, and I knew that. Divorce did not sit in my heart lately. So with an abundance of God-given determination, I found my spiritual home again and became reacquainted with the most important part of my life, my salvation. I was living in an apartment in Carlisle by myself, which offered a lot of alone time. I don't have any children, so it was, it was just me all the time. This was around the time the older of my two sisters had her third child. She named him Isaiah. That inspired me to know why she picked that name, and I got my Bible out and I read that book, which led me to more and more scripture to the point where I became quite aware of how demonic forces in this world have a grip on most everything we we see these days, especially the entertainment world, which by no coincidence is the biggest distraction of our lives, if we allow it to be, of course. Mm -hmm. I immediately began praying for wisdom and discernment to see through all these lies and know the truth. I probably, probably became what some call a conspiracy theorist, but I was more of a truth seeker. Now, are some of those conspiracies true? Absolutely. <laughs> Are others accurately labeled as a conspiracy? Of course. But that's why I asked the Lord for discernment. To sift through the silly notions out there and see the truth with new eyes. I spent a silly amount of time researching through all this to find out simply what most of you here already know. And uh, which is because of the true teachings and anointing of this church. And that is, Satan has a grip on this world, and deception is everywhere. I now see the majority of this world is staged with corruption running deeper and deeper every day. I truly believe we are living in the last days. 
The most important thing I've learned about this, and uh, Pastor John recites it constantly, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't uh, suggest getting a tattoo, but if you did, I should probably put this one on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, First John 4.4, 4, and part of it is, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Uh, like I said, that's the most important thing I've learned, is that the less we are of the world, the more our hearts are open to the best things life has to offer, Amen. which are free, untaxed, uncontrolled by man-made rules or laws. It's called love. It's free, and it's the most important part of life other than salvation. The beauty of love is that it is boundless. I thought I knew what love was until I lost my girlfriend in that car accident. God gave me the gift of seeing that love has depths that I never experienced before. I became very thankful for that gift over time and realized that although the accident was one of the hardest times of my life, it became one of the best blessings in my life because of the wisdom of love that God applied to my life. As I said earlier, I was moved to come up here today and share my life with you. Although a little reluctant at first, like John said, <laughs> just last week he, he asked me to come up here and my eyes were probably that big. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's out of my comfort zone. I've never done anything like this before. I've never gotten in front of people and talked like this. Um, but eventually, it eventually became something I wanted to do because the Lord directed my way and showed me that my life has been an answer to prayer and must mm -hmm. be shared to hopefully inspire others struggling like myself. Since I've been allowing the Lord to direct my footsteps, I don't know if we have it up here. There it is. Uh, this was hanging up in my parents' house all throughout my childhood, and I read it and read it and read it. And uh, it became applicable in my life. Um, thank God. Uh, but since I've been allowing the Lord to direct my footsteps, I've found this church. I've been baptized through this church, and my wonderful wife and, and I have recently been married by Pastor John through his anointing. I was working with Sister Pat, praise God, before I heard of this house. She and I got to talking, and she recommended coming here. She seemed awfully passionate about this place, but of course, I was a bit stubborn and assumed it would be like other experiences, and I was immediately, I wasn't immediately interested at first. <coughs> One day she gave me a CD to listen to. It was Pastor John talking about the importance of tithing, and at first I thought, here we go again. <laughs> Another, I had a lecture down and I was a little harsh, but that was where my mind was, you know, uh, just, as they, just as Pastor John said. And, I remember his daughter saying it the other week, uh, the devil comes to you with thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And, uh, you know, my mind was thinking, oh, yeah, just another, another church with the saturated and religious aspects. But uh, the, lunch, uh, the, uh, the message was about our responsibility to give 10% and how we were instructed to do so because that's what the Bible says to do. And, you know, like, like I said, that message I've heard before, but as I listened, he explained his point. His focus was on how beneficial it is to the giver to give, and that struck a chord with me. Because years ago, I had a youth pastor tell us about his personal experience with tithing, and he told us how he can't afford not to tithe because of the blessings and returns he received in his own life by being faithful with it. I, I never forgot that. My youth group was the best thing for me growing up. I believe this church is making the right decisions with the new fellowship edition because that will give an opportunity for our youth of the community to have fun, but also have fellowship and a chance to learn about our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, thank God for Pastor Dane. I think he's an exceptional guy for doing what he's doing. And, you know, uh, our children 
need that. Mm. Uh, like, like the Bible explains, this is taught to our youth, they may stray, but they'll find their way home again. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'm a good example of that. That's why I believe our new fellowship center is the best thing we can do for our community and our precious children. So, here I am today, learning through the teachings and leaning on the prayer of my new family to learn how to love myself. I live most of my life praying for others, but never thinking of myself to be worthy enough to pray for myself which left me under attack for a very long time. I've come to realize that we as Christians are in the bullseye for Satan's targeting. We are the people fighting every day to one another's soul, and I can only imagine how upsetting that is for the demonic forces. Some time ago, I, I spent some time in a hospital for mental illness, and the majority of the patients were believers. I'm no mathematician, but, you know, that's just proof to me that believers are under attack more, more, more so. Mm -hmm. And we need to be aware of that. But through repair, I've seen protection almost so tangible, you could cut it with a knife. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house in the same way. I'm certain that's because this house has, was started by speaking truth and has maintained that devotion to keep preaching the truth all these years, Amen. 40 years. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. For those of you that struggle with depression, I know what you're going through. I have tried different medications, and personally, I usually found the side effects to outweigh the benefit. For someone that struggles with mental illness, medicine is a good aid, but ultimately it won't heal you. But the word can right. and will mm. if you walk it out. <coughs> I love what Pastor John said one week, and it was, if you walk it out, he'll work it out. That's right. And you know, uh, I think it was one of those bonuses. And, uh, <laughs> they didn't even charge extra for it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> such, easy, such easy words with so much power and truth behind it. Another phrase I saw graffitied on the wall once was, real eyes, real lives, real lies. <laughs> Another good example of simple words with strong truth. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, as you welcome it into your life and allow it to guide your life, I'm sorry, as you allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life, will open your eyes to the truth mm -hmm. and the deceptions of this world will become evident. For people like me with an illness, those deceptions and lies are easily convincing and can really take a toll on your self-worth. Mm. But I'm up here today to tell you that I've learned that we were all made with love and beautiful intentions. Amen. We were all purposely designed, and God has given each and every one of us <coughs> all unique gifts that is to be acknowledged and used as a tool to bring glory to His name. I encourage you all to embrace those gifts and utilize them. I'd like to think in heaven we will live in harmony with each other, all using our God-given talents to rejoice and bring honor to our Father's name. Mm -hmm. I'm being healed for the first time in my life because the people I've let surround my life that love me and pray for me have shown me that I am worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. Amen. I thank my wife for her strong and unconditional love. I think medication can be very instrumental for getting you on track and leveling out emotions that can feel like a roller coaster ride at times. But the best medication and the only medication that can bring healing from depression is the precious word for our Father and His Son has saved us through the new blessed covenant that offers eternal life through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lastly, I'd like to share a, a verse from scripture that means a great deal to me. I can't say it's my favorite because I have too many favorites. <laughs> it starts in Matthew 6.22. 
The light of the body is the eye. If therefore in thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Allow the Holy Spirit through prayer and desire to light you up inside and your actions will be pleasing to, to our Father. It's just the way it works. Mm. I'll leave you with three, okay, four words that I focus on and keep and work to keep at the foundation of my life and my marriage, which keep me afloat when sinking seems inevitable. And that is unconditional love, prayer, and repentance. Mm. And if I could, in closing, I'd like to pray with you all. Father, hallowed be your name. I thank you for my new family here at Freedom and Christ Church. It has done just that for me and so many others. We've been able to rip these chains of bondage out of our lives, and you've allowed us to have true freedom through your word and grace. I thank you for every soul today here that has prayed for me. I thank you and praise you for your continual healing for all of us. And may we, may we all continue to serve you with pure hearts, devoting our lives to honoring your precious, precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> life with us and, um, was vulnerable. Good things happen when we, when we you know, just want to be vulnerable. And, uh, hey, life hits us all, all of us. Amen. Yeah. And not one of us are immune to struggles and, and difficulties. Uh, Darren taught me something and um, a few other people in the past have uh, taught me this too. When they say that, that they didn't feel like they were worthy to to be prayed for. Hmm. I just I don't I didn't personally understand that. I had to be taught that people feel that way. Hmm. And uh, um, you know I, I've been blessed. You know our founding pastor. You know he was an alcoholic. He was 38 years old, and uh, um, God brought him into the kingdom of God and called him to be a pastor. And this church got started from that. And uh, so at a relatively young age, I was always taught about the love of God. And I, I didn't, I needed, I needed uh, people to teach me sometimes about emotions and feelings that I don't know about. And uh, that was one that I'll never forget, that, that lesson. But you are all worthy. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ dying for you proves that you're worthy. For if you would have been the only one on this earth, he would have died for you. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Darren, for sharing that. That was wonderful testimony. Yeah. And, and God's, God's doing a great work in, in Darren and Christine's life. And mm -hmm. you'll see. You'll see. Watch him. Watch them this year. They're going to take off like never before. And uh, sometimes it, it comes in stages. Mm -hmm. Right? Darren, for almost two years now, we're coming. And uh, um, pretty quiet, pretty laid back. Before God sent me up here, I was there, mm -hmm. as far as that aspect goes. <laughs> Didn't want to be seen or heard. I made it through uh, basic training without a drill sergeant knowing my name. I was going to have to slide by. <laughs> I just under the radar type of person. And uh, I was so quiet when, when people heard that I was going to be the pastor of the church. I got two responses. <laughs> the first one was, John. <laughs> He never says five words to anybody. And true, true, he got me. I never did. Not because that was me, but just because I just didn't, didn't talk a lot. And, uh, and the other one was, I didn't know George had another son. <laughs> so I was, I was, you know, good at just sliding by. And you, all, all I did was miss out on wonderful relationships. That's all I was missing. Missed out on getting to know people. Sometimes people are afraid to fail. 
You know, when you fail, you step out and you fail or you struggle, you know, sometimes that's your greatest accomplishment. Yes. Is to learn. At least, at least you try. I asked you, when Peter stepped outside the boat, did, did he fail or did he succeed? Succeeded. I believe he succeeded. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people want to concentrate on that, that he sunk. Yeah, he did sink, but, but he, walked, he, he got back up, didn't he? Yeah. All the other disciples, they didn't get out of the boat. That's right. Can you imagine how much guts and determination it would take in, in, in a stormy weather to literally step outside of a boat into the ocean or the sea? He stepped out, didn't he? And to my knowledge, only two people have ever walked on water. Jesus Christ and, 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 and Peter. And so, if you follow God, you'll be walking on water, won't you? Amen. To me, walking on water is living a life that you could never have loved on your own. Um, Brother Darren is walking on water right now. He's experiencing the peace. He's experiencing the joy that he has never known. That's what, that's, why, that's what we do. We're not a religious place with rules and regulations and no heart in it. We, we want to change lives. We want the whole body from the head to the toe to learn the Word of God and to apply the Word of God and take it out of these, out, out of these four walls and go out and, 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 and live victoriously. Yes. And to overcome things like fear and anxiety and, and sickness and disease and and overcome anything that life throws at you by the power of the Word of God. And so Darren sat back there for, for a while, never coming up for a prayer. Just just taking just taking his time. And uh, about a month or so ago he came up. Mm -hmm. Came up for prayer. And when he did, that that was the beginning of, of the am I right? The beginning of this transformation here. See, sometimes you just gotta listen to the Holy Spirit to come on up and and and, and get prayed for too. Yes. Right? It's the anointing that breaks the yoke and destroys the bondage. Yes. And, and I, can, I can also relate to, to um, Darren being younger and um, give, giving his life to the Lord a hundred times or more. That was yeah. me too. <laughs> Anybody else in that boat? Yeah. Well, I did her. They, they had that, uh, <laughs> what was it called, Bible release time? Uh -huh. And it was at a real... Um, uh, go get her church. Mm -hmm. they, they had good hearts, but they preached the Hellfire Bridgestone man, every week. <laughs> and every week I went up. Because I felt, well, I'll, I'll just try it again. You know what? I, I'm glad that we have hearts like that. Because hearts like that eventually find the truth. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says that God's eyes go to and fro throughout the earth looking for hearts that are loyal to him. <coughs> looking for people that are crying out. You cry out to God, he'll come to you. I promise you that. But Darren mentioned the harmony. There's, there's harmony in heaven. Harmony is the hum of heaven. Mm -hmm. I would imagine if you get close enough to heaven, you'll hear, you'll hear a hum. And that hum is the harmony. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I want that harmony here with us too. Mm -hmm. I want us to love each other, to care for each other, to give. Put your differences down. If something happens in your life that's just so hard that you can't get overcome it, come to me and we'll work it out. But, but, but we got to work together at this here. We, we, all have, we all have something to be thankful for. Jesus Christ Amen. died on the cross for our sins. He forgave us of a debt we could never have paid. Mm -hmm. We can forgive others of the little debts, can't we? And work hard at this thing called harmony. Because I, I'm telling you, the anointing, the power of God flows through harmony. Yes, it does. People coming into agreement in one accord and, and, and one purpose, one thought, one mind, anticipating God to move in and, and upon us. And he does, doesn't he? I wanted to share a quick few <coughs> scriptures with you. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, at Isaiah 9, verse 6. And uh, I think Sedona, I'm going to have you come up a while if you can. I'm going to have Sedona sing a song here in a little bit. And what I'd like to do, I'm not going to talk too long. It's still only about 10 after 11. I'd like to have prayer for anybody that would need prayer. And, and if, you, if you're in here today and you struggle, whether it's depression, 
whether whether you struggle with some kind of um, illness, whether you struggle with um, uh, what it, whatever it may be, like I said, depression or anything, um, loneliness. I have found that we're all broken in one way or another. Amen. But through relationship with Jesus Christ and through the Word of God, we can become whole. We can become happy again. We can find peace again. Is there anyone in here that they haven't heard, they haven't laughed in so long that if you laugh, you probably surprise yourself. You don't know what your laugh sounds like anymore. I'm here to tell you God wants you to laugh. Laughter is good for you. Mm -hmm. Look at Isaiah 9, verse 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, <clears throat> and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah <coughs> prophesied that Jesus Christ would be the Prince of Peace. He is our Jehovah Shalom, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He is the Lord, our peace. He is our peace. If you're looking for peace, it comes through Jesus. You can't get peace any other way. You can get temporary fixes. Mm -hmm. But true peace comes through Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. That's who he is, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I want to explain to you how he became our peace. Look over at Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah prophesied that Jesus would, would make peace through the blood of his cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he brought peace to us. The cross is the big deal. <coughs> There's seven redemptive names for the Lord Jesus Christ. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. He's also Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is Jehovah Nisi which means the Lord is our banner, or our victor, or our captain, Jehovah Nisi. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, he defeated Satan. He conquered him. All the power of darkness was conquered. Jesus is our Jehovah Nisi. Amen? And then Jehovah Jireh, he is our provider. Whatever we need, is provided to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. He's sort of a big deal. <laughs> he is a big deal. Amen. That's why. That's why you know you 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 can get lose your job if, if you pray in a public place sometimes, or or a, a school, or a college, or you know Christianity is still under attack because there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power. The Bible says there's no other name under the sun by which men may be saved. Jesus, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me, he wasn't kidding. Amen. He is the only one who could have done what he done. You see, Jesus is God. He's God the Son, isn't he? And when Jesus took on a body like ours, he lived on this earth and never sinned. And so when he went to that cross, he was the sacrifice for the sins of, of all of our sins. Another, another uh, redemptive name is, is he, is our, he is our redeemer. He is our righteousness. That through, the, through the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we've been made right with God. Amen. We've been brought near to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's our everything. And he is our Jehovah Shalom. And Darren is experiencing Jehovah Shalom. He's experiencing the peace that passes all understanding. If people could pay for this, they would pay, pay millions of dollars for this. Amen. They would pay big amounts. But what Darren says is free. Mm -hmm. It's free. Well, it costs Jesus his life, but it's free to us. Amen. It costs God his son. Now the Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. 
If you're in here today and you're, and you're being tormented by depression, you're being tormented by fear, you, you, you feel alone, you don't have to feel that way. Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom is here. The Lord our peace is here. And one touch from God and you'll never be the same. Look at Isaiah 53. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. This is what's called the redemptive work of Christ. This is the work that he did on the cross. He purchased us. Did you ever hear someone say, I have a coupon and I'm going to, to redeem this coupon? Mm -hmm. You know, he purchased us with his life, the redemptive work. It's also called the atonement. And in that atonement, look at this. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. I like what the Amplified Bible says. It says the punishment of our well-being <clears throat> fell on him. In other words, <clears throat> when Adam and Eve sinned, man was separated from God. But man wasn't just separated from God. Man was broken. Man was lost in brokenness. At one time, Adam and Eve were one with God. They were whole. Without God, every human being is lost in brokenness. Mm -hmm. That's why they try everything they can to fill that brokenness or to heal that brokenness. And it cannot be found until we are made whole with the one whom we were broken from. God Almighty. Right? Sin separated us from God. Did not. And through the death of Adam and Eve, we were all born into that sin. We we're all born into a fallen race. But that's why Jesus came. He is our peace. He is our healer. He is our righteousness. He is our eternal life. It's all found in Him. He is our joy. He is our eternal life. The Amplified Bible says the punishment for our well-being was upon him, or our ability to be made whole was on Jesus Christ. He did it. He did it for me. He did it for you. He did it for every human being that would be born on this earth. He made a way for you to be one again with God. If you're here today and you're broken and you're lost, you're broken by sin, he took your sin. Christ. If you're broken by disease, he paid the price. Look at this. By his stripes you were you are healed, right? Peter says you were healed. He's already done it for me and for you. Now what's left to do? Open your heart, come into the presence of God, and let him do what only he can do. Ain't God good? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to have Sonona sing this song, and as she sings, I'm going to invite you to come on up here, and, and, and I'm going to pray for you, and I believe the power of God will heal, deliver, and set free. Would you rise as she sings this song, too? And so we're either singing, we're either getting prayed <coughs> for, or you're helping us pray, but I want to tell you, don't, don't discount what God can do, because he loves you that much. Amen. Doesn't the Bible say we walk by faith, not by what? Sight. Sight. There's so many people in the Christian world today, they got to see it first. That's not faith. Right? Faith is believing before you see it. But what are you holding on to? Why are you believing before you see it? God promised it to you in His Word. His Word is the same today, yesterday, and forever. His Word never changes. And so as you hold on to that word and you believe and you thank God, the power of God for whatever it is you're praying for will come into your world <coughs> and bring about what you're believing him for. That's how it works. Amen? Amen? What did Jesus say to the woman with the issue of blood when she touched the hem of his garment? Yes. Remember that? What did he say when he turned around and saw her? He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. She believed with all of her heart. She, she, in fact, she said it, didn't she? Yes. By touching, I'm going to be healed. By touching, 
I'm going to be healed. She touched him and she was healed. Amen. Now, ultimately, ultimately, we know that our faith that we have is supernatural faith that comes from God, that comes from his word. But yet Jesus refers to it as our faith. We can, he gives us the faith and we can grow in this faith. You don't have to sit back and let life punch you in the face every day and wonder what's happening. You can stand up in faith in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Would you rise, please? And I want to thank Darren, Brother Darren, again. Thank you for a wonderful testimony. Wasn't it awesome? Let's give it a hand. I love that. I love that heart. That was real life there. Amen. Sometimes a testimony like that can, can just, just do just great wonders. That, that's what we're all about here, changing lives. I preached a sermon one Sunday, and it was called Any Given Sunday. And, and what, it, what, I, what I meant by that was any given Sunday, I can look out there and see miracles, lives that were changed. Amen? Live, I, I see people back there that one time they were, they were going to take their own life, but God delivered them mm -hmm. and rescued them. Amen? Yeah, come on up here once, Brother Gary. Brother Gary I was talking to Brother Gary Eisner when, when Darren came in, and I know that wasn't any coincidence, and he helped us in our pre-service prayer. And, and, but Gary has a wonderful testimony. But, but you, I, all I'm saying is the people you sit back next to realize that God loves them as much as he loves you. And realize that they are miracles just like you. Amen. Leslie and I just happen to know more about your lives being the pastor and pastor's wife. But I'm telling you, you are all miracles. Amen. And you know what? Let's, let's get some more miracles going. Amen. But when, when, he, when he was talking to Darren, show him what you pulled out of your shirt there. Mm -hmm. I wear it as a reminder. It's an empty 30-odd-6 shell. It used to be full. It was in a gun. It was in my mouth. And I pulled the trigger. And it didn't go off because that woman back there was praying for me. She knew what I was going to do. Three months later, I took it out, and the gun and the shell both worked. But because of what God did, my life was changed. Everything that happens to me is because of God and what he's done Amen. in my life. Yeah. And it's just hard to explain. It's just everything. He just showed me so much. I've seen so much. You can't take God from me. It's impossible. I can't take him from me. It's impossible. This this man here, the only human on earth that I'll trust with everything I got, because I know what he does for this church and for God. And it it changes lives. It 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 rescues people, and, and it helps. It's it's. Yeah, it's a, it's it's empowering. It's empowering, and Darren, you're in for uh, a, a wonderful ride because it's it's mostly good. There is some humps you're gonna hit, but it's mostly good, and you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Your family's gonna love it. You're gonna help this church, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about: helping people, helping people. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Because God loved us first. Amen. We love him. Amen. And do for him. And Amen. I thank you for that. I thank God for that. I thank God for this church every day. Every day. Amen. Every day. My wife, and behind every good man, there's a good woman. Let me tell you that. I know that for a fact. And it was set up that way by God. Yeah. By God. So if you do it right, you can't. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful life. Amen. It's a wonderful, even if it's not true, even if there's no heaven, it's still a wonderful life. Yeah. But there is, because I know that. I know that. I know it's waiting there for me. Yep. 
Amen. Praise God. I want him to share that with you because yeah. this is real. Yes, give him a hand. Gary has been, uh, how many trips to Bogota, Colombia with us? Four. Four times. Four times. Gone, gone across the world there to give his testimony. He gives it every day. Seen, seen wonderful, amazing things. Mm -hmm. Seen people do just miracles. Mm -hmm. Miracles before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Before your eyes. And you know it. Mm -hmm. And you know it in here that it's God doing it. Mm -hmm. you, it no way else. It's God. It's, it's a Amen. wonderful, beautiful life. Amen. Amen. I have this, I have a word for someone in here from the Lord, and he, he wants me to relate it to myself, and it was this. I used to get disappointed, frustrated, and maybe even sometimes embarrassed about how far down my life became myself, myself personally, how, how, how far down I was. Now, I'm so proud of how far I've come. Amen. Amen. And what the devil used to beat me up on with is, is actually what God helped use to, to give me courage and confidence. Mm -hmm. If I can make it out of what I've made it out of, I can make it out of anything, right? right. Mm -hmm. So don't get discouraged if your life is, is in turmoil and upside down right now. You have a God that is able. Mm -hmm. And you keep pressing into the word, keep pressing into the spiritual things, keep coming to church. If Darren wouldn't have given us the time to work with him and to teach him and to show him the word, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have come this far. He believes in us. Mm -hmm. He believes in God's call in our life. Every service, he's, he's one of the best listeners in here. Mm -hmm. I know who the listeners are. And, and Darren's always like, he's looking, <laughs> he's listening. He's listening. And every bit of anointing and gifting that God has given to me, he sucks it up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sucks it right in there. And not just me, no matter who's speaking, Pastor Dane, Sister Lisa, anybody. Whatever we're doing through this church, God's given us the ability to do it, and people's lives are changed. Yes, amen. Never forget that. Okay? All right. Join us tonight if you can at 6 o'clock. We have, uh, I'm going to be teaching more on Jehovah Shalom and, and the redemptive names of, 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 of Jesus Christ. And uh, along those lines, it's our power tonight at, um, at 6 o'clock. And then, of course, again, Wednesday at 7, 7 to 8 30. We're back at it again. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for every single person that, that came out here uh, this morning. Lord, I, I thank you for, for Darren. I thank you, Father God, for the courage that it took to do that, Lord. Yeah. It took a lot of courage. But Lord, he touched my heart. He touched all of our hearts, Lord. Yeah. But Lord, he's our brother. And Lord, I thank you that the power of God is just flowing through him, Lord. The peace that passes all understanding will continue to just nurture him and heal his heart, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that soon others, even others outside of these walls, will be hearing that man's testimony and being blessed and, be, and come, come out of darkness into God's light. Lord, I thank you for being with each and every person as they go today. Keep them safe, keep them happy and healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.